Today, I attempt to survive for 100 days as a vampire hemosage in the coldest sheet of ice in Rimworld. Will my supernatural vampire powers allow me to conquer constant freezing temperatures, countless raids, my insatiable thirst for human blood, and ultimately, a mechanoid invasion? Meet Smogi, an Ackerman vampire hemosage, cast out by humanity to the most northern ice sheet. He has to survive the coldest spot on the map on the hardest difficulty. Day zero, and it's freaking cold already. The first thing we did is build a shelter out of silver. Silver is normally used as a currency, but we start with a lot of it and we need to preserve our wood and steel because as you can see, there's no single resource on the map. It's a sheet of ice. We built the base in a funky shape to save some silver and after that we built a heater and a wind turbine. This will keep Smoggy somewhat warm. We caught our dog Porker eating our supplies and we can't let that happen. I'm sorry, boy. With our cozy little home finished, it was now time to start thinking of warm clothing to withstand the outdoor temperatures. Vampires don't have to sleep, so Smoggy used the night time to hunt down a group of penguins and carried them back to the base to butcher them. He did hurt his eye though, but as a vampire he's able to regenerate extremely fast. On the start of day one, Mashahiro Drake from the Trash Packers decided to raid us. A great opportunity for Smoggy to test out his vampiric toxic cloud ability. And this proved very useful, knocking out Drake after he inhaled the gas. And we welcomed him as our first prisoner. Smoggy believes in the Sanguine Order. Based on eating humans, feeding on human blood and siphoning psychic power from humans. The ideology honors slavery and having a slave around to regularly blood feed on is going to make life as a vampire a lot easier. With Drake safely stashed away in the silver shed, we set up a research bench to research batteries. With that, we don't have to fully rely on the wind to always blow to warm up our butts. On the end of day two, we built Drake his own prison cell and we converted him to believe in the Sanguine Order. We built the battery and we only had a little bit of steel left, so we went to shoot some old machinery that was lying nearby. But sadly, it only got us steel slags, not the steel itself. Melting down steel slags in the smelter is pretty much our go-to move for getting steel right now besides trading. But unsurprisingly, traders don't swing by these parts very often. I discovered I burned through a hefty amount of steel while trying to set it up, and I ended up having to take apart the door and the battery to scrounge up enough steel for the smelter. There were a few materials wasted in the process, but at least we can now smelt down slag into steel. This turned steel into a feasible and quite frankly our only building material option. By day four, Smoggy had somehow already convinced Drake to become his slave. Strangely, the first thing on Drake's agenda was naming the faction. I don't know why a slave has a say in this matter, but you gotta give him credit for his boldness, especially while living under a psychopath vampire. I choose to change the name ever so slightly to match the theme of the playthrough, and before you all go ham, it is French and it is pronounced bate. Drake is good at shooting and crafting, so at least that's something. He's also a tough, delicate, wimp genie. Very curious how that's gonna work out. We'll just give him a gun, which sounds a bit stupid, giving your slave a gun, but trust me, I'm a doctor. A group of travelers came by on day 5 and Smoggy and Drake decided to attack them because they're eager to get their hands on some fresh human meat. The first one was easily downed. And Smoggy used his vampiric long jump to jump to the second one, which was skillfully shot by Drake. Smoggy jumped to the third one and used his toxic cloud. But this one was pretty tough and he managed to stay alive long enough to knock Smoggy down. Fortunately, Drake managed to kill him just in time. Luckily, you can only kill vampires by destroying their brains, so Smoggy was back up on his feet pretty quickly. Now, the belief in the Sanguine Order makes it so that followers can't regain psychic focus the usual way through meditation. Instead, it gives believers the psychic death knell ability that can be used to siphon the last life force out of downed characters, killing them while completely refilling the caster's psychic focus bar, as well as giving them psychic focus experience. Vampires also have a hemogen bar, which they use for vampire skills. They can drink human blood to refill it, and they can also feed on corpses to refill it. But I didn't know this completely consumes the corpse for just a small amount of dirty blood. What a waste of good meat. Later that day, a transport pod with some free food crashed nearby, and Smoggy went over to use his psychic death knell ability once more, leveling up his Psy Link, and making him able to pick the new Hemosage ability Hemodrain. This one made him able to steal blood from a distance from enemies. Miraculously, a trader paid us a visit and was interested in purchasing some of our items. This allowed us to acquire their steel, some cloth and a couple of bears in return. 
Smokey just loves his beers. Now we had enough steel to make a clothing rack to store all the ethically produced clothing we had. This also gave us enough steel to make a stove and turn the human meat into Happy Meals. The only upside of living in a permanent winter is that we could sit up a simple freezer. It's just a steel wall with a vent letting it stay as cold as the outside, which was always freezing. Things were looking pretty chill for Smoggy and Drake. They had food and shelter and Smoggy took the time to research hydrophonics. However, the peace was brutally interrupted by yet another raid. A pigman decided to attack the colony. Drake managed to shoot him, but was also hit by the guy's Molotov. Smokey used his psychic death knell ability, leveling him again and unlocking the word of offering, making him able to convince anyone to give him their blood. This was going to be our bread and butter for filling his vampiric needs. We got another raid the same day, so let's just test it out. Give me your blood. Smokey used both of his blood siphoning abilities on the raider and we were able to get a lot of blood out of him. And another raid. Food comes in faster than friggin Uber Eats. As you can see, things were going quite well. Maybe a bit too well. The base was getting littered with items and trash. So on day 15, the boys decided to expand the base with some iron walls to create a bit of breathing room. On the same day, I found out that I can use the blood siphoning abilities on Drake without him getting a debuff from it. Let me just take a sip. Suddenly, a transport pod crashed and we quickly imprisoned the poor sod. Smoggy used his vampiric powers to instantly heal her wounds. Sadly, she wasn't going to be of much use to us. So we harvested her lung and sucked the rest of her life force out of her. Day 17 had just started and a 7-year-old kid called Osborne wanted to join the colony. By now it was September, which is kinda like Rimworld's autumn. The game warned us that we needed to get some warm clothing because temperatures were going to reach a whopping minus 57 degrees celsius. Time to use our last bit of steel and build a tailoring bench. All these workbenches are electric and using a lot of power. But fortunately another trader came by and wanted to trade the lung we harvested for a lot of steel. Making us able to build another wind turbine, make a nice base upgrade and build another battery. The next few days were pretty chill. Aside from an arctic lion attacking the boys and another desperate raider attacking the colony. Until I noticed that Smoggy would need to death rest very soon. Death rest is a special mechanic for bloodsuckers that puts them in a coma-like state in which they regain power. However, during this time Drake will probably try and escape the colony. Yeah, somehow he doesn't want to live with a blood-sucking human flesh-eating vampire. I can see nothing wrong in that. I woke up Smoggy early from the death rest, giving him debuffs, but we had to recapture Drake. I got the genius idea to take him as a prisoner, making him less likely to escape. And we put him inside of the freezer so he could feed himself while we death rest. With Drake safely locked away, it was time to take a three day nap. And hope Drake doesn't freeze to death in our freezer. And after a few days of sleeping, Smoggy woke up well death rested, with Wench wanting to join the colony. She was a phytokin, a kind of plant person that can spawn dryads. I don't think it will surprise you what happened to her and her little friends. This made Smoggy level up his psy casting again, earning him his ultimate hemosage skill, Bloodstorm. And oh boy, wait until you see this in action. Two more raiders attacked the colony and one called Grand Shea. Grand Seer? Whatever, she has great building skills, so we kept her. You'll be making us a solar panel very soon. Apart from keeping our food supply steady, the raids also consistently brought in steel weapons that Drake was eager to melt into additional steel. To gain a bit more of the precious steel, we decrypted the mechanoid transponder we found, and we used it to drop a long-lost mechanator ship part near our base, and after killing the scyther, it provided us with some more slag to melt. We spent a few peaceful days immersed in research, and not much happened. Except for our new member Grand Chez attempting an escape. However, things took a turn when three refugees sought sanctuary in our flourishing colony. Bloody Bate. Yup, we went full Rimworld on them. Bon appetit. Together with the raider that hopped by later that day, we had enough food stock to last us a while. But wait, there's more. A few days later, a pack of frost mites made their way into the area. Initially, I was a bit puzzled about what was going on with them. But it turns out that they dig up corpses hidden under the snow. It was quite unnerving to discover how many deceased individuals were somewhat buried in the snow, but it means more food for us. Well, enough fooling around. There's work to be done. 
Time for Grandier to build that solar panel and for Smoggy to get back to cooking all this delicious meat that's been under the snow for at least a few thousand years. It's rich, it's creamy. Yeah. Really good. On the night of day 44, we got our first blood moon. It lasted a whole day and it makes vampires drain their hemogen faster than normal. And when they run out, they go in a frenzied hemo hunter state, uncontrollably seeking out blood. This of course happened to Smoggy when he was fighting a great axe-wielding viking, because my brain is smooth. And I didn't watch his hemogen meter at all. Luckily, everyone survived this, except the raider, and the blood moon disappeared just before Smoggy wanted to kill Grandchet for her blood. Whew. Later that day, we got a visit from a viking trader, willing to buy a lot of our trash and sell us a ton of wood, allowing us to make a big and much needed upgrade to the base. But the enemies seemed to smell that all was going well. And the so-called suicide bears decided to up their raiding game and attack this with a well-armed group. A great moment for Smoggy to test his Bloodstorm ability. It takes a long time to cast, but it makes it rain blood. Quickly refilling the hemometer of vampires, but non-vampires don't really like blood rain and start vomiting uncontrollably. Giving Smoggy enough time to jump around with his vampiric jumps and kill off the whole raid by himself. This is freaking overpowered, not gonna lie. And I love it. The suicide bears sought revenge because the very next day they attacked with an even greater force. Just look at Renny over there. Deserter armor, level 13 Psylink, armor skin glands, detoxifier lungs. What a beast. And for Smoggy, it was love on first sight. Smoggy now knew what he was capable of and he used his Bloodstorm ability. He jumped towards Renny, who was unable to do anything but vomit, and he used his Toxic Cloud ability. And this is where I found out what Detoxifier Lungs actually do. They negate toxic stuff. Like toxic clouds. Yeah. So Smoggy jumped around to kill the other two and came back to Renny, who used the Toxic Cloud ability once again. And now actually downing her. Just look at the sick armor we got. And look at the potential of the thumper gun. We kind of forgot about Grandchet and she died of the flu. But who cares? We now have Renny, clueless about the impending horrific changes in her life. Poor girl. We got a ton of steel from all these raids, so we decided to build a comms console. This is potentially a game changer because it increases our trade opportunities for more building materials. Smoggy leveled up his Psycast ability again, and since we already unlocked all the cool abilities from the Hemosage tree, he branched out into the Night Stalker tree. This had some great skills in it, including one that can summon an Eclipse at any moment. Amazing for vampires! A few days passed and the comms console started proving its worth, because a ship came by that wanted to buy our garbage and sell us a whopping 600 steel. And with that we were able to build some much needed storage shelves. However, before we could do anything else, Smoggy had to death rest again, and to speed it up, we built him a death rest accelerator. Of course, Drake tried to escape again, which was inconvenient, and the raids kept coming in. So Smoggy had to do with just a short death rest. Also because some furry e-girl with cat's ears landed nearby, and we had to save her. For, uh, reasons. And after that, more raiders. Whoa, calm down, Scorpion. I'm on my way. Unfortunately, our e-girl refugee tried to leave the colony right at the moment we got attacked by Manhunter cats. So we saved her, but I got a bit carried away while selling stuff to the passing war merchant, so I kind of forgot about her. Oopsie. Well, at least it's free food. We were still making attempts to recruit Rennie, but she started out with a freaking 25 resistance, so it was gonna take a while. Luckily, a baseline human named Sky decided to join Bloody Bate, and we decided to not eat her. She didn't believe in the true faith, but she was tough, had a great memory, and great fighting, construction, social, and mining skills. Overall, a very good colonist. The next few days were nothing special. We got raided by some Vikings again. We increased the size of our excess clothing piles. We looked at the defoliator ship part that crashed nearby. A dragon entered the map. We clapped the defoliator ship. We tactically dodged the dragon when it became angry. We built Sky a human leather fur bed. I don't even want to know. Smoggy learned summon Eclipse. We reached day 69. And finally, on day 71, the great moment was there. After weeks of convincing and numerous recruitment attempts, Smoggy finally managed to recruit Renny. And he could now fulfill his file plan. In an unseen moment, he ran up to her, opened his mouth and he planted his fangs into her neck. Not to suck her blood this time, oh no, to plant his vampire genes into Renny. This changed Renny into a vampire as well. 
For Smoggy, this was his only chance of finding someone to love. For the rest of the world, this was the birth of another blood-drinking demon spawn. Rennie had to recover from this gene implantation and Smoggy carried her to bed, where she had to rest for two days straight. But when she'd wake up, there would now be two massively overpowered vampires to rule the ice sheet of Bloody Bate. She was also a great psycaster, a protector, with some great defensive and healing abilities, even able to regrow lost limbs. How useful is that? A few days passed and we welcomed Rennie to the crew and started crafting three human leather backpacks. Because Smokey decided it's time to head out and raid a nearby abandoned factory. Or you've guessed it, more steel. But of course right at the moment everyone wanted to leave the map to go to the camp, we were getting raided. And this time it was a pretty big raid too. So we cancelled the excursion. And Smokey used his Bloodstorm ability to let it rain blood on their foes making them puke-locked and giving Smoggy and Rennie the chance to strike them down with their melee weapons, while at the same time Drake and Sky provided support fire from inside the base, which worked out wonderful. And there, in between the rotting corpses of their fallen enemies and the piles of tainted clothing covered in a vile mixture of blood and barf, Smoggy decided to make a seduction attempt on Rennie. And it actually worked. Oh, Rimworld. Now it was time for the group to head towards the factory, while Smoggy stayed at the base to protect it. We got rid of the Neanderthals that took refuge in the old factory and we tore it apart, giving us a ton of steel and components, so it was a great success. By the time they got back, Smoggy had cleaned up most of the mess outside of the base, and we had a ton of steel to work with. So they expanded the base even more and created some nice bedrooms so Smoggy and Rennie could live together in peace. Since Sky was still a non-believer, we decided to imprison her and try to convert her to our religion. Unfortunately, a few days later, the inevitable happened. A mech cluster just dropped on the map, consisting of different mechanoids. My plan was to build an EMP launcher, so we would be able to stun the mechanoids. But we already spent all of our steel on the construction of the base. As a gift from the bloody heavens, meteors of steel and components dropped from the sky on our ice sheet. We quickly released Sky from the prison since she was the only miner, and we sent her out to mine the steel needed for the EMP launcher. However, after two Mega Wolverines randomly joined, which we had to slaughter because their appetite, our resolve was tested once more. Another mech cluster landed near our base. This one had a mortar with a countdown timer. Time was starting to tick, quite literally. The crew had to prepare for the final two assaults to save Bloody Bate. Drake crafted the EMP launcher and we quickly put down a smithy to make some ancient steel helmets, which was better than nothing. And with everyone kitted out, it was time to engage the first group of mechanoids. We built a defensive wall to hopefully lure the mechs through the middle while we EMP bombed them. Smoggy and Rennie took the offensive against the mechanoids, pulling them out of their hiding spot. With Smoggy and Rennie gone, Drake decided to try and escape again, but he was instantly knocked down by Sky. The hit squad decided that they had to continue and jumped in to destroy the mortar. This woke up the rest of the mechanoids, which Smoggy and Rennie lured back to the base, where everyone got their guns out and started shooting the incoming mechanoids. Of course, they went around the wall and sprayed us from the side, knocking Rennie down. Smoggy decided to jump into melee range to make the centipede blaster stop blasting, while Sky kept the pikeman stunned with the EMP launcher. We had to hurry because the carpenter was slowly breaking down the steel walls and would soon start the deconstruction of the base. Fortunately, Drake was back up on his feet and was helping Sky to take down the pikeman. After which they helped Smoggy kill the centipede. Now only the carpenter was left, and although heavily armored, he doesn't deal a lot of damage to people. He was already on his way to the base to start tearing it down. When suddenly my only brain cell remembered how to take down mechanoids. I sent out Smoggy and Drake with their blunt weapons to the carpenter and together with Sky's support fire, they managed to stunlock him. This fight was really sloppy, hitting our team hard. But we didn't really have time to rest. It was almost day 100 and we had to destroy the other mechanoid cluster. We needed a quick plan and this plan consisted of tribal era heavy clubs. Apparently tribal weaponry is our best bet against high tech mechanoids. We quickly built another steel wall and gave everyone a club. Smoggy went in to infiltrate the mech camp and this time there was an unstable fuel cell really close to the sleeping mechanoids. Smoggy started bashing it and jumped out when the cell started exploding. The explosion took out most of the mechanoids. 
The rest of them were quickly taken care of and together the team ganged on the carpenter with their clubs. And with that, victory is in the pocket. This is how I survived for 100 days as a vampire on an ice sheet in RimWorld. And I had a blast. What a wild ride it was. Thank you for watching this far. And a special thanks to my patrons. You guys are great. While you're still here, check out the next video. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.